Hi, I'm Paul from the band Minwee. Normally my day job is something like this. But recently I travelled to Haiti with fellow New Zealander Emily Sanson Rejui. Emily was living in Haiti when the earthquake hit the country last year. Her husband and two of her daughters were killed. Her third daughter, Aliana, was rescued with a broken leg after 22 hours under the rubble. Many months on, she is one of the most rockin' three-year-olds you will ever meet. In memory of her family, Emily set up the Ken Bela Foundation for children in Haiti. Ken Bela means never give up. Ken Bela! More about that later. The quake was the same magnitude as hit Christchurch in September 2010. But the death toll was around 250,000. That's as if we lost everyone in Christchurch in 30 seconds. And over a million were without homes, which is like the entire city of Auckland being thrown out of their houses overnight and having to look for a new place to live. What would we expect others to do for us? As always, New Zealanders responded with help. We are a New for instance, artist Sarah Larnick auctioned one of her own Ladyhawk pieces and organised other artists to do the same. Wellington's Radioactive raised a donation to support a damaged cultural centre, and Auckland-based t-shirt company Closet printed special edition t-shirts and raised $19,000 for Oxfam. So while in Haiti, we thought let's catch up with Oxfam and see where that money was used. Haiti is intense. Like, it's actually intense. We've all been to festivals where the port get a bit rough after a couple of days camping. How about after a year? All questions of dignity aside, that creates some serious health issues. Oxfam dug down and installed a couple of thousand toilet and shower blocks in communities, schools and hospitals all around the city. They have also helped small local businesses get up and running. Shipping containers have been cleverly converted into canteen type shops and through grants and loans the local women who run them have been helped to stock their shelves to sell drinks and food to people in their neighbourhoods. Rice, beans, soap and the good old chilli sauce. Admittedly this lady is still living out the back of her shop under canvas so there's still a long way to go. For instance, when this is your house, it's hard to know where to begin, and most often that's by hand. Oxfam have helped with debris removal and are continuing to look for funds for fuel and engineers to operate these little beauties. Cheers, Oxfam, we'll let you get back to work. Schools are popping back up in Haiti. Children in bright coloured uniforms are learning their right from their left. And in some places part of the curriculum can be a healthy high nutrient meal each day before they go home. Over half of the population are under 18. And this is why Emily and the Ken Bela Foundation are working to increase access to education for young people in Haiti. Firstly to raise awareness of the lack of these opportunities and then to channel resources to an existing school giving increased access to those who would normally have limited or no chance for learning opportunities. Like young people anywhere, they want to be made aware of their own worth. They want to learn, sing, express themselves, play football, pretend they're Jackie Chan. They want to be people. It will be through their own lives that Haiti will see change. This is the future. They are the solution. As one lady said, yes we have had destruction, but also Haiti has life here. We're still alive. We want to live.